Hello again. So yesterday I had my first dose of injectable estrogen. I went to have the nurse show me how to inject it. And um, yeah, that was really good that I did that because I had no idea what I was doing. <clears throat> so the injections are given in the thigh. You know, I had kind of assumed that maybe it was going to be in the butt, and I was wondering how the hell am I supposed to reach that? But no, you do it on your upper thigh, on the top. So, um, and I've got, uh, I use two different needles. So I have an 18-gauge needle that's used for drawing the uh, estrogen into the syringe, and it's uh, suspended in um, oil, in uh, sesame oil, if I remember correctly, so it's really viscous. And then you've got a 22-gauge needle that's actually used for the injection. And that needle goes in surprisingly deep. I don't rec I'm not sure exactly the distance, but I was like really surprised how how deep she she put that in. And so like I'm I'm not entirely looking forward to uh doing that myself. I hope I can manage. Um the uh the injections are done once a week. So hopefully it won't be a problem. If it is, I'll just have to go back to Kaiser and have the nurse do it for me. <clears throat> and when she pulled the needle out, uh, there was bleeding. So, yeah, I'm not a fan of needles, but <clears throat> it is what it is. <clears throat> but, yeah, I'm glad I, glad I got that done because I was in serious need of getting my... Um, estrogen levels sorted out because my estrogen levels were too low on uh, oral estrogen. I was taking six milligrams. Given that I'm post-op, I was surprised that my levels were as low as they were. <coughs> so I had a, I went to see the endocrinologist and I was given a couple of options, patches or injectables. I opted for injectables because you only have to do it once a week. And I'm glad I went that route. Um, so far, they seem to be working. I've felt pretty good today. And it seems like it's definitely helping with the uh, with the dysphoria, which is awesome. So, so, yeah, I'm really glad I went that route because my estrogen levels were definitely too low. I mean, I can... I can definitely feel the difference. Like I feel I feel better about myself having you know the right amount of estrogen in my system. So yeah, it's I find it interesting just how much of an impact the my estrogen levels have on my dysphoria. Like you would think that being post op it wouldn't be that big a deal, but for whatever the reason it is. You know, there's, and then of course there's also like the physiological aspects of having abnormally low estrogen levels. So yeah, super glad I went on injectables and three months down the road, I will be getting, um, blood work done to make sure that everything is in order and so they can see where my levels are at. And next week, when I go and do my uh, injections on my own for the first time, what I'm going to do is I'm going to see about recording that, you know, because some people might find it interesting to see, and maybe it'll be helpful for some folks and educational. So, so yeah, I hope I, hope I can manage, because I know I'm going to be nervous as hell, and I think... What I'm going to have to do probably to help help with that and calm myself is um, I'm probably just going to find myself reciting lines from the movie Train Spotting. If you're not familiar with that movie, it's a movie about Scottish heroin addicts. So I'll be reciting some lines from that, but of course replacing references to heroin with references to hormones. But I chose not to choose life. I chose something else. And what are the reasons? There are no reasons. Who needs reasons when you've got estrogen? Yeah. So, yeah, I'm not sure. Uh, I'm really not sure how much more there is to 
more there is to say about the the injection. Oh, and in case anybody's wondering, yes, it was painful. Getting needles jammed into you hurts. That's just how it is. So, so yeah. If you're averse to pain and averse to needles, definitely uh, injectables should not be your first choice when it comes to estrogen. And as far as I know, the first choice is typically oral, and then you're only switched to injectables or patches if need be. But I'm definitely glad that I only have to worry about it doing it once a week because occasionally I would miss a dose of of my uh, oral. So, so yeah, it'll be nice that all I have to do is worry about keeping on top of things once a week. And what I'm going to do, I think, is I'm going to do my injections on Tuesdays because that's when I have to take the garbage out. <laughs> And I'm pretty good about taking out the garbage. So far since I've lived since since I've lived in this house, uh, so far I've only missed missed taking out the garbage once. And that wasn't because I forgot. That was just because I just didn't have the energy to do it. So so yeah, I'm I'm really good about remembering to take the garbage out. So if I can tie my injections to taking to garbage day. That should help me remember. So, so next week I'll be taking it uh, a day a day early, as it were. But I don't think it should matter if it's just one day early. And then from there, just every single Tuesday, I'll I'll shoot up. And then at some point, I'm gonna have to fi- figure out what I'm supposed to do with my sharps container. I don't know if I can just take that over to Kaiser and like bring it to the pharmacy and then have them dispose of it properly. I don't know. What I'm thinking I might do is I might just go ahead and just dispose of, just toss the needles themselves into the sharps container, not the whole syringe, just because I don't think it should be too much of an issue. And by doing it that way, I can definitely fill it up more, especially since I'm going to be using two needles at a crack. So we'll see. So, uh, yeah, I guess that'll do it for this video and I will see you all later.